Hello everyone, my name is Heather. Welcome to the channel Bookables. So I've done a lot of year-end videos. I've done my favorite reads of the year, I've done my worst books of the year, I anticipated for 2024. Today I'm going to talk about some honorable mention books. So these are books that I really really enjoyed that just didn't quite make the top 10 cut. I still really like them and I was like I haven't really talked about a lot of these in depth so I was like you know what let's do an honorable mention videos because I've read 90 books. Not all of them I'm going to talk about all the time but you know I have the 10 that I love and adore and have talked about a lot. Then I have some that I really enjoyed that I just don't talk about. So that's what we're going to do today. I have about seven or eight that I really enjoyed, really would recommend. They just you know, didn't make my top 10 list, if that makes any sense. First up is one that I have talked about a lot that it barely didn't make my list, and that's the last one by Will Dean. I've talked about this a lot. It is a thriller that, like, I feel like nobody has read, and I don't know why, because it's amazing. I read it on a whim last year in Net Galley, and it blew me away. And it's a book that is best to go into not knowing much, and that's hard for me because I like to know things. <laughs> You know, that's just how I am. Um, but basically it's about a woman and her and her boyfriend decide to go on this cruise for a vacation, obviously. And they have a great first day, la la la. They go to sleep, she wakes up, she is completely alone on the ship. And she's like, what the hell's going on? And it goes freaking cuckoo bananas from there. Like if you think you would guess the plot of this book and where it's going, you won't. It is a thriller. It is a thrill ride from start to finish. I loved it, would highly recommend it. This almost made my list because I enjoyed it so much, but it didn't, but man, it was freaking amazing. Next up, I have This Spells Love by Kate Robb. I read this also on a whim last year and I liked it so much I had to purchase a copy of it. Again, another book that I don't hear a ton of people talk about, but I really enjoyed and would recommend. If you want just a really like kind of warm, cozy romance, this is a great one. So in this beginning of this book, Gemma is broken up with by her boyfriend of like three years and she is devastated. She's like, I don't know like what happened, like what's going on, but you know what? Like I wish I never met him. Like I wish I can go back in time and never have met him. And so basically like her and her aunt and her best friend do like this kind of like really hodgepodge spell of like, I wish I never met him. And then she wakes up the next day and what do you know? She realizes all of her memories and she never met her um, ex-boyfriend. Great, right? Great, great, right? No, because the same night she met her boyfriend friend those years ago she also met her best friend Dax and they have been like rocks ever since and since you know she never met her boyfriend her ex-boyfriend of the night she's also never met Dax so she's in this world where her best friend does not know who she is and she's like that cannot be and so she's trying to remedy that and of course maybe she's realizing wait do I have feelings for my best friend yes it's obvious it's got like this time thing going on with it but man it was adorable it is a short read you can fly through it but man I loved it a YA book that I read last year that I really enjoyed was The Do-Over by Lynn Painter. I have learned I really like her YA books. With the exception of her new one that came out last year, I tried reading that, I think it's called Betting on You, and I honestly DNF'd it. Like, it was really trying too hard to be like When Harry Met Sally, and I just wasn't trying with it, and it made me very sad. But I love The Do-Over, and I love her first one better than the movies. This one, again, is kind of like a time thing, if you will. So in this book, we have a character named Emily who is, you know, she wakes up on Valentine's Day thinking, oh, it's great, I'm gonna tell my boyfriend I love him, la la la, and then he breaks up with her, and she just has a dumpster fire of a horrible Valentine's Day. She wakes up the next day, and what do you know? It's Valentine's Day again, and she's like, what the heck? And it keeps happening. It's like a Groundhog Day book where she keeps repeating the same horrible Valentine's Day over. She also keeps running into Nick, who is like kind of the loner kid, and she cannot not run into him, and it's just really cute. I really enjoyed it. If you want a cute, fluffy YA book, I definitely recommend checking out Lynn Painter's books. This is one that I really enjoyed, and probably my favorite YA read of last year. I have another fun one. My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. I love this one. I read it in summer. It's the perfect time to read it. This is a book that is not to be taken seriously. It's a book to just have a good time with. In this book we follow Cassie and Cassie's just getting evicted from her apartment and she has nowhere to live. And what do you know? She sees this amazing ad on Craigslist with this amazing bedroom and amazing price and she's like, this is good. This is too good to be true. It is. She moves in and she meets her new roommate Frederick Fitzwilliam. 
sounds regal, doesn't it? And she learns that Frederick is he's not like other guys. He kind of dresses like he's from a Regency novel with a top hat and timepiece and all that kind of stuff. His furniture's really old. He doesn't have any food in the house. You can get where I'm going with this. She learns that her roommate is, oh my gosh, he's a vampire. Feelings happen. The plot is insane. The plot is insane. Like there's a big um, conflict in it that gets resolved in a matter of paragraphs. But man, if you don't want a plot heavy book, you just want a fun vampire time, I recommend it. it was, a lot of people don't like it, but I loved it. I thought it was fun. I think if you just want a good palate cleanser, a just fun time, definitely check out this book. Speaking of, you know, paranormal, we're gonna go into Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison, my favorite Rachel Harrison book I've read. I love this book. This book, again, is kind of like the last one where it is just straight up bananas. Like, it is just like, what? Like, the most wildest thing you can think happen will happen. In this book, we follow a character named Vesper, and Vesper comes from a cult family, a very religious family, you know, and she escaped it when she was 18 and she hasn't looked back since. And so it's been four years, she gets an invitation to her cousin who is still very much in kind of the throes of the religious thing with her family to her wedding. And her cousin's marrying Vesper's ex-boyfriend and she's like, what the heck? So, you know, I'm getting invited. Outsiders usually don't get invited. So she decides to go to figure out like, why is my cousin marrying my ex-boyfriend? Like, what the heck, what's going on? And she gets back there and you learn that not only her family is like a very religious thing um they're also like in a um a devil worshiping cult so <laughs> that's not weird at all like at the dinner table they're all like hail satan and i'm like pass the bread <laughs> it's it's so crazy and it kind of gets crazier from there you learn more about what they believe and you can see where the plot's coming like a thousand miles away but it's just bananas like Rachel Harrison's books are described as horror I don't find them scary and that's coming from someone that gets scared of um scary movie previews okay <laughs> So to me, it was just very outlandish and kind of just chaotic, but I really jive with it. I had a good time, a fun time. It was, like I said, cuckoo bananas, but I was here for every second of that cuckoo banana cereal. I'd eat it again. So I don't know. I really liked it. Speaking of a bananas book, my last book that's like kind of bananas is The September House by Carissa Orlando. So this is about a character named Margaret and Margaret has always owned, Margaret has always dreamed of owning her own home, much like a lot of us but interest rates just are the devil <laughs> but anyway she and her husband are managed to find this amazing beautiful victorian house for an amazing price they're like oh this is our dream come true it's got everything we want and it it is good to and it really is too good to be true <laughs> <laughs> because as they move in they quickly learn that this house is not any this house is not like any other house it's a haunted house baby and it is freaking haunted like I'm talking about ghost on ghost on ghost and not only that but these ghosts interact with you sometimes they'll attack you like some of these ghosts will bite her you know every like October or September I think the walls will bleed like it starts from the top floor and it goes down there are some ghosts that are really nice they have a maid there that has been the maid there for like years and she's actually very thoughtful and nice but it's just weird there's also like a big emoluting kind of evil that happens like i said every year in september and you know Margaret's husband's like, look, this is not working out for me. I gotta go. You know, who's to blame him? But Margaret's like, look, I've waited too long to have my dream house and I'm not letting some ghosts scare me. And so she just learns to live with it. So that sounds scary, right? Living with all these ghosts that, you know, but you know what? You're reading this through Margaret's point of view. And Margaret has lived in this house for a while and she knows what's up. She knows the ghost's name. She knows how to deal with them. Like she has got a plan. So to you, while reading it, it's not scary because Margaret's really not scared because she's dealt with this for so long. Her do but her husband has been missing for quite some time and her daughter's coming back. So she's like, I gotta nip some things in the bud if you get what I'm saying. So it was a fun one. Again, very outlandish, very wild. The plot was kind of ridiculous, but I had a great time with it. Like if you just want some good times with like some crazy plots and stuff like that, these three books, man, they all got you covered. Trust you, trust me on that. <laughs> then I have a couple of romances that I don't hear a ton about. First up, Funny Feelings by Tara DeWitt. This was previously independently published, but I got picked up by a publisher with good reason. This was funny. This was about a character named Farley who is, what do you know, a comedian. So of course it's going to be funny. And at the beginning of the book, she's kind of getting discovered by some other big comedians. She's going to go on tour with them. And they're like, you know what? We really need to like boost up your public image, like get 
people to know you. And so they're like, let's stay in a relationship. It's a fun game trying to guess in Hollywood which relationships are you, which relationships are real and which ones are publicity stunts. I don't know. You let me know. But anyway, her manager, who has also been a former comedian, his name is Meyer, decides, you know what, let's just go ahead and be fake dating, get your rating, blah, blah, blah. And they have been in love with each other for like years. Like it is so clearly obvious they've been pining for each other for forever. Meyer is a single dad and it's steamy and it's wonderful and it's funny. I loved it. If you want a great rom-com, look no further. And my last book I want to talk about is another romance and that is Mixed Signals by BK Borison. This is the this is the third book in her Love Light Farms. Love Light Farms got really popular because it's a holiday romance and I think it's awesome. But the other books in the series are also really great. I have not read the second one yet, but I did read the third one. The third one follows Layla and Caleb. Layla is the baker at Love Light Farms and she's just, you know, she's happy for her best friends that have found love, but she's like, you know, when's my turn? And so she's trying to go out on dates, but she keeps getting these duds that are just horrible. Enter Caleb, the town's golden boy, who has also been in love with Layla for like Ever. And he's like, you know what? Hey, let's just, you know, I'm gonna, let's just kind of fake date. Let's just fake date, if you will. Like, I'll show you how it's, how a woman is supposed to be treated. And you can maybe give me some pointers because I haven't been on a lot of good dates either. Like, come on, bro. We can see you for a mile away. But you know what? It worked because it's freaking adorable. They have a great relationship. It's so beautiful. I loved it. So there you have some honorable mention books, books that I did really, really enjoy that just they barely and they didn't make the cut by just a little bit but either way I still enjoy them and would recommend all of them if you have any like honorable mention books do you have those too or is it just me I don't know <laughs> but either way I would love to hear them please leave them in the comments below as always thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video